The Spartans opened with the second half blitz, scoring seven straight points. Terry Donnelly from the corner. Bullseye. Not so fortunate was Indiana State. Michigan State continued to apply pressure, and Indiana State didn't score the first three times it had the ball. On this play, Greg Kelser showing some of his fancy moves. A fadeaway jumper from a tough angle. Michigan State took a 16-point lead at the 16-43 mark. Again, the Spartans called on Donnelly. And the man with the hot hand made his second straight basket from the corner. What a performance. Donnelly couldn't even believe it himself. He kept feeding me, and uh, fortunately they were going in for me. And I, it, it was something different for me because I haven't, I haven't been a shooter. Donnelly's torrid shooting continued. His long-range jumpers accounted for two more baskets giving Michigan State a commanding 48 to 32 lead. Everything seemed to be going right for the Spartans until Greg Gelser banged into Larry Bird and committed his fourth personal foul. With more than 15 minutes remaining in the game, Judd Heathcote now had to substitute for Gelser, who was the top scorer and rebounder in Michigan State history. Gelser's departure was now forcing Heathcote to make some changes. When Gregory uh, went to the bench, I think uh, we instructed Irvin to uh, kind of take over and maybe play a little bit of ball control and uh, be a little more conservative. I think we lost our momentum, and uh, giving uh, Indiana State credit, they just kept after us and kept coming back, but therefore uh, a long stretch why we went almost scoreless for four or five minutes and enabled them to creep back into the ball game. And that's the kind of break Indiana State had been hoping for. From outside, Bob Heaton scores on a jumper. On defense, Indiana State played with much more intensity. The Sycamores completely disrupting the Michigan State attack. And the Spartans throw the ball away. With Kelsey sitting on the bench with four fouls, Michigan State was a different team. And so was Indiana State. Coach Bill Hodges and his assistants were fired up. Watch this nifty move by Carl Nix, number 22. Four defenders in pursuit, shovels the pass to Staley, and he scores it from underneath. An important basket, and Staley's first of the game. Indiana State was now flying. Larry Bird getting the ball in the crowd, hitting from the baseline, and he cuts Michigan State's lead to nine points. With a little better than 11 minutes to go, Indiana State's full court press forced Michigan State into another turnover on a Carl Nix interception. Believe it or not, the Spartans had scored only one basket in four minutes of play. No longer were they in command. On this Carl Nix jumper, Indiana State narrows the difference to eight. 52 to 44. The Sycamores have the ball once again. They take their time, carefully working the ball to Bird. And he cuts Michigan State's lead to six. Indiana State had staged an amazing comeback, and Judd Heathcote was hopping mad. The Indiana State fans were delighted, but they also had reason to be concerned because Greg Kelser had returned to the Michigan State lineup. And it didn't take long for the Spartans to recover. From the top of the circle, a perfect pass and a stuff by Johnson, and he draws a foul at the same time. It's an airborne foul. And that gives Johnson two shots instead of one. Magic made them both, resulting in a four-point play. And Michigan State led 61 to 50 with five minutes to go in the game. And that may very well have been the turning point of the championship. Bill Hodges knew that time was running out. And Indiana State was having trouble at the free throw line. With only a minute left, Irvin Johnson's inbound pass traveled almost the length of the court, right on target to Greg Kelser. Another beautiful play. Johnson and Kelser, partners in destruction. Michigan State led 67 to 58, and the Spartan fans started chanting. The game was just about over. Indiana State hustled down court for one last effort from Steve Reed. Topping it all off was Irvin Johnson's over-the-shoulder pass to none other than Greg Kelser, who officially ended the game with a thunderous stop.
State Spartans had won their first national championship in a 75-64 victory over Indiana State. No surprise that Irvin Magic Johnson was voted most valuable player of that 1979 Final Four. Magic left school that year after his sophomore season. The Los Angeles Lakers drafted him. The rest is history. Larry Bird had already been drafted the year before as a junior eligible by the Boston Celtics, and the rest of that relationship is also history. 1979, a look back. We hope you've enjoyed it. I'm Bob Lee. Thank you.